Today's webinar is going to be about Git branching and design strategies. And uh, my name is Mike Mayhew. I'm one of the managing partners uh, at GoToGroup. Um, today, basically, we're going to be talking about a couple of things. We're going to be talking about Git branching um, and kind of going over the uh, the Git workflow model for as far as the branching strategy goes. And then we're also going to I'm kind of going to show a design strategy on how to implement um, Git across your tool set um, and we'll talk about using um, Git within JIRA and some other tools to make and improve traceability with uh, development and um, those kinds of things. Muted. Just going to mute, mute uh, Brad there. So basically um, GoToGroup we've been a partner with Atlassian since um, the very first couple of years Atlassian came, in, came into business. Um, we've been around since 2002. We pretty much all of the work that we do is um, related to development, helping our clients develop software, improving their uh, application stack around development tools, um, and improving traceability, transitioning from waterfall to agile, uh, doing migrations from more legacy uh, SCM tools to uh, Git and even Subversion. As, as the SCM tools have evolved from uh, CVS and uh, source safe into then subversion and perforce. Uh, we've kind of rode, uh, rode the wave there along the way. I actually partnered with perforce and we still do implement perforce in a lot of uh, situations. Um, but for software development, as you guys probably know, Git is definitely the most popular um, source control management system for, for development and especially agile uh, uh, style development. Um, but we've got a lot of experience. We have offices in Japan, um, China, Europe, and India. Uh, we have 35 full-time employees, and um, my role at GoToGroup is just to kind of uh, manage the uh, professional services engagements, and I do some product development around um, Git-specific products, uh, as well as um, a product that uh, allows for traceability uh, with requirements and test cases in JIRA. Again, so we've we've got we're partners with Atlassian. We're um, also partners with Perforce, or what they call uh, Platinum Atlassian Experts. Now um, we're pretty much partners with any uh, company where we integrate their tools into um, the stack that we typically recommend um, for software development. And so that includes integrating CRM systems uh, like Salesforce and Sugar. Uh, we have a product uh, that I'll talk about here in a second called Mule, uh, based on MuleSoft called Connect All that um, helps to integrate uh, TFS and other SEM tools, um, Salesforce, testing tools like Quality Center to integrate those uh, in with JIRA. Um, so we've done a lot of productivity installations uh, over the years. Uh, we've, you know, I've spoken at a lot of webinar conferences and teaching a couple of classes at the Atlassian Summit coming up. Um, we have medium to large clients and some small clients, and uh, again, mostly what we do with those folks uh, is improve their, uh, I call it engineering improvements, um, but again, it's kind of improving their processes and making them deliver on time with more precision, uh, and usually that in involves transitioning folks from more traditional processes and methodologies to uh, source control, uh, like Git, and um, implementing uh, agile practices and new branching strategies um, to be a little bit more agile and more uh, dynamic as far as releasing software. By the way, uh, we'll have everybody will have a chance to ask questions after. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, raise your hand and, and punch in any questions, and we'll we'll do a Q and A session after. Basically, I'm going to go through a little bit of. Uh, some you know these slides and then afterwards I'll do I'm actually going to do a demonstration of kind of implement uh, showing what what I was uh, referring to as the branching strategy and kind of how the tools work together uh, designing that that solution um, that, inc that incorporates Git. Um, but again we uh, we've done a lot of uh, installations um, probably the most uh, interesting one in the last bit um, that uh, Jobin's on the line as well. He was involved in Southwest Airlines where we uh, 
essentially did a lot of automation around how they could uh, spin up development uh, tools stacks uh, because they have so many projects uh, that they wanted to be able to spin up an individual um, tool stack for each development effort and that meant standing up new Git repositories, um, inter, uh, interfacing or inter, um, interlinking all of those uh, applications within the stack to each other. So there was that full traceability and we did that using um, Chef, which is um, kind of a server uh, automation scripting language uh, based on Ruby, uh, but also um, a lot of software development and plugin development around um, the Atlassian tools themselves in order to allow for, again, that automatic stand-up and implementation or instantiation of the stack uh, pre-configured and ready to rock and roll. So essentially, uh, a, a development team would put in a request that they, they needed, they had a new project and they were going to be, for example, developing a new uh, iOS application for, for Southwest Air. Uh, they would basically punch in some parameters and this automation would roll up, create the actual uh, virtual servers, install the applications including Stash, uh, Git, Jira, Confluence and the rest and the, even the uh, continuous integration environment um, and linking those things together and even creating the initial um, projects and screens and rapid boards and, and repositories and everything. So it's um, quite, quite an involved project and interesting in many ways. <laughs> So one of the reasons why um, we talk about integrating Git is because um, Git is such a, a cool um, SCM tool to begin with, and it came out at the right time when everybody, you know, development teams are trying to integrate their tools so they can kind of show traceability. For example, when they make a code commit, um, they want to see that kind of be a C to a bug or uh, a new feature or a story. Uh, and that goes also uh, with build information, you know, continuous integration is a big phrase, you know, everybody wants to do continuous integration because it's constant checking of, of the code that's being committed and we, we try to do test driven development and we try to do code reviews and, and these are all best practices things. Um, so, you know, integrating uh, Git, whether you're using Stash or GitLab or, or whatever your platform for Git is, Bitbucket, um, GitHub, uh, integrating that with the other tools and integrating it with your process uh, improves deliver deliverability and precision um, on what is actually being coded and, and put into a particular sprint or release. And because in the end, uh, what we really want is we want to release the software on time. We want to release what we agreed to release uh, within our iterations or sprints. And then we also want to make sure that we coded to those specifications or requirements and we didn't really go outside of the box uh, and code things that were not part of a requirement, which certainly could cause um, more bugs. Um, and again, you know, we just lost traceability because there's code being committed that's not related to what we're trying to deliver. So in this demonstration or, or the talk today, you know, our reference implementation, if you will, is going to be Stash. It's going to be based on Stash, but in the end, it's really Git. We're still running Git commands. Um, whether you're using Stash, Bitbucket, or, or GitHub, or, or GitLabs, uh, it's, it's, you know, the, 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 work, the work or the developers interacting with these tools are, are the same. There's just some improved dashboarding and things like that depending on how we design and implement the stack itself. So we're also going to talk about how Git can integrate with Jira. And we'll um, also kind of show that in, during the demonstration. And HipChat is another interesting one, which we'll not, I'm not really going to demo today, but it's, if you're not familiar with HipChat, it's kind of just a, an internal um, chat service, but it allows you to kind of uh, automatically, based on Git hooks and um, other things you can configure with Jira, and that, uh, for example, if a bug gets created, it will automatically throw information up in a particular chat room. So the developers in that room would, would see that there was a bug created and they would then be able to just click on it and go right into JIRA, create their, their bug branch um, from within JIRA and start working on the problem. And, and as they're working on the problem and as they're transitioning the item through the JIRA workflow, more updates come into the uh, hip chat room. Uh, so again, that's you know, ultimate collaboration and, and information radiation to the rest of the team. 
so why does Git rock and why is everybody using Git these days? Why, why doesn't everybody just stick with Subversion? Um, well, as Linus probably thought up as he was designing it, you know, he was kind of frustrated with traditional SCM tools. And the biggest thing that, that I love about Git is the fact that every developer essentially has their own repository. So you're not really um, locking a file or checking something out and keeping somebody from making any changes. Um, and you can also, uh, you know, create branches at, at your leisure because um, branches are very cheap in Git. And you can make local branches and you can create branches on the remote central central repository. Um, but that's just, that, that allows a lot of flexibility, you know, for the developer to be able to create uh, a local branch um, on his development, his or her development machine and kind of work through some, some ideas and things like that without ever having to really merge that back in um, or they can merge part of it uh, back into the, uh, the branch that they're trying to push back up. And, and again, that, that totally means that it's decentralized. Everybody essentially has um, their, their repository locally and then they can kind of interact uh, at will uh, by using pull requests or pushing uh, changes up to the to the central uh, repository where the where the branches are, um, and that goes back and forth. You can either create branches uh, at the central location and then uh, pick a clone, and then check out that branch, uh, or you can do it the other way around and create the branch locally and push that branch up. So there's a lot of flexibility. Branches are super lightweight. Um, Git is is obviously the highest performance SCM tool on, on out there right now, uh, based on its design, it's, it's written in C and C++, and it's very efficient in what it does. And um, so there's not a lot of logging, like CVS used to log everything. And then if you were to ever hook CVS up to uh, JIRA or, or any kind of uh, fisheye tool, it would be scanning the logs uh, forever and ever and ever. And it was actually caused fisheye, which is another product from Alassane, to kind of bog down um, just because of uh, the design of CVS, really. Um, one of the other cool features we'll talk about today is pull requests. Uh, if you think about code reviews, it's kind of neat uh, to where you can kind of uh, within JIRA or from your local machine, you can create a feature or a bug branch and then basically push, push that uh, branch up um, the uh, central repository. And then as you make your code changes, um, you could, you could uh, do a pull request and that essentially kind of kicks off a review, a code review. And then uh, once that review happens, then um, you can declare whether you're going to merge that into whatever branch, uh, whether it be your development or integration branch or directly into master or whatever. Um, so it's kind of, it goes through this little checks and balances and a and peer review process um, before things or uh, codes actually merged into uh, your, your continuous integration or, or to a final um, delivery branch. Yeah, then the last cool thing is backups are built in. Since uh, every developer essentially clones their clones the repo, they they all have a copy of the repo. So if the you know if realistically if the git if the git central server uh, were just to blow up, um, you know everybody has the repo. Everybody has everybody has a backup. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, looking through the history and, and the logs of everybody's uh, local repositories and essentially restanding up whatever those branches were um, in a new centralized server. So there's a lot of solutions out there, but again, all of the, you know, the way we interact with them are, they're, they're all the same. I have a GitHub account, I have a Bitbucket account, um, I've used GitLab, and I, I use Stash all the time, and, and I pretty much use the same commands. I'm, you know, I use IDEs sometimes, I use IntelliJ, I use, also use Emacs, and, um, and I use the command line, so no matter what tool I'm in, I'm, I'm really running the same commands and I'm doing the same workflow essentially. Uh, the difference is, is each, each one of these kind of has a different set of uh, web UI uh, tools and kind of they typically integrate with uh, internal wiki, uh, for example, GitHub and Bitbucket, there's a wiki and some issue tracking abilities um, in those SaaS services. And then Stash uh, definitely has a lot of flexibility uh, as, a, as an, an independent server or Git, GitHub, if you will, um, that can be implemented within your, your own network and it provides the ability for code reviews and, um, and pull requests and those kinds of things.
So we're going to talk a little bit about branching, and there's there's really the branching strategies uh, used to be a lot more complicated actually, and get uh, seems like things have simplified a little bit with get. The the branching strategy that we're going to talk about today is I, I consider it to be a little bit of a mix between what they call get workflow and feature branching, um, and that's because it has a little bit of both, but I think it could still be considered um, a get workflow, and that's what it's labeled, or that's what I label it as. But basically, uh, you always have a master branch, and no matter if you're using uh, Bitbucket or, or GitHub or anything, there's always going to be, you know, when you create a, an initial repository, it starts out with a master branch. Um, I think we used to call that trunk uh, back in the day with subversion and things like that. But uh, a lot of times, um, developers will, will kind of branch off a master, and they'll create little release branches or dev branches, and then they'll, they'll eventually merge back into uh, master. Uh, but, but we recommend, or I recommend, that there's another branch, um, and this is the branch where the developers will actually clone from, uh, typically. And this is called, uh, a lot of people call it the develop, develop excuse me, the develop branch. Um, I call it uh, in an integration branch sometimes, and I think in the demo I actually named my branch integration. Because um, this is the branch where you would do continuous integration. This is the one where you're kind of um, merging features and bugs and, and um, you know, stories that have been coded back into this development branch, uh, giving you the flexibility to obviously run CI on this. And then based on um, when you're going to kind of release a particular version, um, then you could then merge uh, from develop back up into, uh, into master. Uh, but basically, in this diagram, it's kind of showing that continuous change happening along this developer or integration branch, and these feature branches are just created off of this, and then, of course, they, they merge their, their changes back up after doing pull requests, uh, theoretically, and, and they merge them. Again, we're really talking about having a master branch, uh, which is where you're going to kind of version or, or release off of, and then a develop or integration branch. Um, where your continuous integration will, will tend to, to clone from and do builds. And then um, from there we branch off and do feature bug or whatever type of uh, branching. So these are these branches down here are going to be plentiful. Uh, Atlassian, for example, for every bug, every new feature, everything that a, the developer does, creates they create a new branch. Um, and then they do a pull request, and then that eventually gets merged back into the uh, developer integration branch and then they can release off a of master. So I'm going to start to do the demo. Um, and if anybody has any questions real quick before I start the demo, you can go ahead and ask some questions. I think uh, I'll let, I don't see any in there right now. Um, but I'll keep an eye out for questions popping up, popping up right now as I start to uh, transition into the demo. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So, what you're seeing right now is um, uh, Jira. This is the issue tracking system from. Yes. Uh, hi, Mike. I think we have one of the question listed. Um, so, one of our attendees wants to ask: For parallel releases, do we need to have multiple develop branches? And that's the question we have. Um, no, you do not, because you can always, um, you know, at any merge point in on that development branch, you can always go back to that point in time and, and, and snapshot uh, or tag that particular uh, that particular um, merge. Um, but and I'm assuming when you say parallel development you're talking about you're you're doing parallel development on the same piece of software. So um, you have kind of two swim lanes and, and they may release at different times. Uh, so Usually, what would happen is, is as you kind of merge those features that you're working on for both of those um, those development streams, 
you would merge those back into the integration branch. Um, but based on when you release, one swim lane is going to release before the other, or vice versa. Uh, that's when you would merge into the uh, master branch and, and go ahead and tag version or that release um, uh, of the two swim lanes. It's not okay. to say, you know, you couldn't have, you couldn't, you know, it's not to say you couldn't have uh, an integration branch for both um, both streams, if you will, or both both swim lanes, but it's not necessary. Any other questions? Yes, uh, we have one more. It says, how are HF handled when we have multiple releases in production? How is what handled? HF handled. HF? Hot fixes. Oh, um, so hot fixes can be brought, also brought off, they can be, um, those branches can be created off of the integration branch. And then obviously, as soon as that hotfix is completed, you would merge that into master and then and then tag that. If you know, assuming you're going to push that into production immediately, um, th that's that's the way I would do it. There's also, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that are actually creating a branch off of master for hotfixes. But then again, you need to make then you're going to end up merging that back downstream. Um, the other way by doing it from integration, you're always merging in one in one direction. Any other questions? Uh, no, not for now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so what we're looking at right now is uh, just a JIRA dashboard. And the reason why I show the JIRA dashboard is because it's kind of the uh, culmination of, of integration and, and information radiation, right? This is kind of, this is an example of, of a developer group or a developer team dashboard in JIRA that I would say um, you know, gives the right information. We've got a, a um, activity stream here on the right, and uh, we can see that uh, not just information about issues and how they're moving through JIRA, but we also see information about uh, code commits and builds and, and uh, you know, all of the different activities that are happening uh, within this particular project. Uh, we have some test information up here from another add-on, and then this is kind of showing our progress with our sprint and then if we were to go look at our, our rapid board, we can see the items that we're actually working on. And so we have this, uh, right now we have this FX2 sprint in play, and we, you can see that we've got um, stories and bugs and, and different things in there. And they're all uh, related uh, to some sort of epic and then to some sort of version or release that we're going to essentially uh, release at some point. So for example, this R1B120 may have multiple sprints or iterations until it finally actually goes out the door. Um, and so while all this is happening and while the developers and uh, the folk, other folks on the team are working with these items and they're kind of moving them across the board, um, they're, they're also doing the actual work. They're coding, they're testing, they're, they're building, right? Um, so <clears throat> the cool thing about the integrations and linking these things together is if we go to look at a particular item, um, this is uh, a bug that's related to an epic. So probably what happened is, is it was being tested by QA and um, during the sprint, and they realized that there was a problem. And so you see a lot of activity over here on the development side. You see that there's been multiple branches created. It looks like there was a bug fix branch, another bug, and of course this is a demo. So I've created a lot of stuff that's probably not necessary. But um, the, the idea is, is that uh, it may have had a feature branch originally, and the feature kind of got delivered to, to you know, QA during the sprint. Um, not when I say delivered, I'm, you know, normally an agile team is co-located, so they would they would all be on the same team, hopefully. Uh, but as some testing happened, something failed, and then they created a bug fix branch, or it could have been a production bug. Either way, um, but what they did is they did they created those branches, and then we can see also that there was some commit activity. Um, on two different, in this case, again, this is a demo, so I'm, I'm actually committing to two different, two different uh, repositories. Uh, but we can see the information because what's happening is, is we've integrated our stash with Jira, and um, based on how I'm interacting with with Git, uh, I can have this stuff automatically update the item in Jira. 
Um, and then so after those commits were made, we see that there's been a couple of pull requests. And then you can see that this one actually, um, this pull request uh, had a code review. And then once it was reviewed, it was approved. And then after it was approved, it was merged. Um, and then theoretically, we, we, you know, we merged back into, uh, into uh, master or uh, probably into our integration branch. And then the other cool thing is even if you're using Jenkins or Bamboo or build tools, we can also see build information. Um, so this is, you know, what I talk about a lot with companies is pull requests and reviews and everything. And so if I flip over to Stash, um, well this is Bamboo showing the build. So within Bamboo, you can associate issues with particular build plans and, and builds. Uh, so as these continuous integration builds occur, every time you know I, co I commit code or whatever, uh, it will update the the issues in Jira. And let's see, go to stash here. Mike, uh, just uh, while you look up for this, we have another question. Um, so the question says, when do you merge develop branch to master? Is it after your release goes to production or before it goes to production? That's before it goes to production. So if your production, if you're building your production um, release, it should pull from master. Um, so you would merge into master and then tag that particular version and that's where the the production build would pull from or clone from yeah. and uh, we have one more um, when do we need to do a git rebase and when we should do git merge um, those are that's kind of an open-ended question so yeah git merge um, so typically what I'm displaying or showing today is, is uh, as you do your, your code, your, and I was about to go into that, so we'll kind of talk about from a developer's perspective what's their workflow. Um, so we'll, talk, we'll go through that and that I'll discuss when, when you would merge uh, your changes back into the, uh, the integration branch or your feature branch. Um, but as far as rebasing, I mean, that should not, you shouldn't have to rebase very often, but you certainly want to get fetch a lot because you won't be able to see, uh, for example, th this, this new uh, branch was created um, for a feature for this FX9, uh, FXC19 uh, new feature. Um, and so in order for me as a developer to see that, um, I would need to basically get, you know, get fetch. Uh, in order to pull those branches back. Now I've already I've already pulled this this branch down and I've done work on it. And if, if you guys can see my screen, let me just clear this out so it's a little bit more clear. <clears throat> but if I run get status, you can see that I'm actually already on that FXC19 branch because as soon as this um, was created, and I'll show you how I created it. Uh, I did it from Jira because if um, if we go back to Jira real quick, you can see the activity here. And essentially what I did is, is I pretended that, um, and this is not a good issue because it's a test case, but if this were a feature or, or a story, um, I, I created a branch by clicking that link. And that takes me to stash. And I should click that so it stops asking. And then it presents me with this. And it asks me the repository, uh, is this a bug fix, feature, hot fix, release? What kind of um, branch is this? And then it, where do I want to branch from? And of course, I branched off of integration because that's kind of what I'm talking about today using that Git workflow. So I branched off of integration and then it automatically puts this in there because it knows that I'm, I clicked that link from this particular item in Jira, and I could re rename this. Uh, but that's essentially how I created this branch. And then once I created that branch, um, I, uh, I can't saw that. I essentially um, did a git fetch and saw the branch come up, and then I did a uh, git checkout of that branch. And actually, after if we go to stash. 
and go to that branch. There's a cool little thing where I can just copy the branch name because that's I would have to type in that name. So I just copied the branch name and then pasted it in and did a checkout. And so as soon as I did that, that put me um, on the the branch that I needed to do the work on. And then essentially what I did is I went into uh, my trusty code editor Emacs and I made a change and then I saved that change and then went back here and just um, did a get status and saw the change and then pushed it back up. Uh, but I actually didn't just push it. What I did is I went back into stash and um, created a pull request and um, then essentially did a review. You can see here I have two pull requests and you can see the fix uh, that I did here uh, was done through a pull request and then once you have that pull request um, you can either merge at that particular time which I have not merged yet um, so this is what you were asking before is when do I merge so let's say that you did your change and you're ready to kind of get it up into the into the main um, continuous integration build you would present this pull request to the other folks who come in here and kind of do a review and look at the the commits and the, the differentials of the change that you made and then um, they could either accept it or decline it or you know this is horrible coding Mike um, or, or they could go ahead and merge it um, and this is where you can merge it back into uh, into master or to whatever branch and so that's kind of the workflow that we're talking about today is um, using you know, a couple of different tools. Now you can do the same workflow without necessarily using um, Jira at all, but Jira just provides that nice um, kind of workflow for the actual issues themselves, you know, for issue tracking um, at the same time allowing you to kind of integrate the, the, the whole workflow around the development aspect, um, showing the branching and the committing and the pull request. So, you know, that, that that whole scenario that I just went through, you can see when it when it happened. Here's the pull request right here. That login feature, it's still open. Um, it hasn't been merged yet. And then there's the commit, and there then there's the, the excuse me. There's the original branch, and um, it's as simple as that. I basically create the branch. I you know whether whatever tool you're using, you just do git fetch. You see that you know change, uh, check out that branch, make your changes and then set up the pull request, do the review, and then merge to the appropriate branch. And I think we've got about 10 more minutes, and I apologize for all the cutoffs, but I'm going to open it up for Q&A. And I'm going to need... Um, Breath. I'm going to need you to read the questions because I don't see them, if there are any. Uh, I don't see any questions at this stage. So if there are. Okay. We'll give it a few more minutes and, uh, and then uh, if anybody has any questions or they want to um, get help with how they're using Git and their processes, feel free to reach out to GoToGroup. Um, my email is mike at gotogroup.com, which is pretty easy to remember. It's mike at go, the number two, group.com, and we'd be happy to help. Okay, we have a question. Uh, is git fetch the same as pull origin branch name? Um, pull, is, pull origin branch name is actually going to pull uh, the updates from that branch that you're, that you're talking about, that you're trying to pull from. Fetch is just, it's actually going and getting um, any new things that happen, any new branches that exist out there. Uh, and it will look for any changes based on the branch that you're currently on, but it, it looks across the repository, so you may not be on that branch. You know, maybe five other branches were created, so when you run git fetch, it, you'll see it say, oh, there's, there's four or five branches, but you're still going to, you know, maybe you're still on master. So even though you do git fetch, you still need to switch over to the branch that you need to work on.
and git polls is, is a very important one as well just in general because you know obviously if there's multiple developers you want to be polling frequently to pull other people's changes into your into your local Give it about another minute for questions. And uh, yes, we have another question. Is there any way if we can get only specific branch from re remote repo instead of cloning whole repo? Um, you could, you always have to clone and then switch and check out a branch. Yeah, there's really no way. I guess you can, I, I think you might be able to clone and specify a branch, but you're still going to get whatever that branch in, in, entails, which is usually the whole repo. So that's that goes back to another important uh, factor, which is how do you structure your repository? Um, the, you know, for example, the repository that, that I was showing you guys and demonstrating is actually the Linux kernel, and it's, it's about 650 megabytes, and it's the entire kernel, and so obviously there's a lot of modules and things like that. That's something you really couldn't probably break up. It just has to be that big, and it has to be uh, in a single repository. Um, but that may not always be the case. You may have, uh, you know, the other pieces of software that maybe have uh, different modules that release independently, and then um, certainly you could actually break those off into different repositories, um, and that would mean that you would clone less uh, than the entire uh, piece of software, depending on how you release. Um, but if you're releasing in a single fire, you know, and there's a lot of modules, but you're always releasing on the same intervals, um, it probably makes sense to have it in a single repository. We have another question. Um, it says, um, Is there any way we can control uh, who can pull and push to remote repo? Yes. Uh, specifically in Stash, you can actually um, control who can create um, things, who can edit things, and who's just read-only. Uh, but you can also, within JIRA, um, you could, and there's also Git hooks. Uh, Git hooks is a way where you can actually say, um, you know, you, we don't really want you to be able to uh, push changes or push code uh, up until there's been a pull request uh, or or not be able to merge unless there's been a pull request. And so there's different ways to do that. There's git hooks is one way. Um, if you do use stash, there's ways to do that with stash permissions. Um, I'm pretty sure Git Labs has permissions like that as well. Uh, and also within JIRA, you can, you can even make it to where um, the JIRA issues can't move forward in the workflow until there's been at least a code commit and one one review or pull request. Okay, Mike, I think... Um, Counting down, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh, we don't have any questions. Uh, yeah, I think looks like you've answered most of the questions uh, the attendees had. Great. Well, thanks, everybody, for showing up. I apologize for all the, the hang-ups. Um, I'm not sure what was going on with GoTo, GoToWebinar. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, Mike at GoToGroup.com. And um, I look forward to maybe seeing some of you guys at uh, the Atlassian Summit uh, or on the next webinar. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your time. Thanks.